Hey guys, welcome to Autophone, Alex here. In one of my previous videos, I showed the installation of the master cylinder and the slave cylinder for the clutch in the hydraulic system using the Dodge Neon 5-speed, particularly the SRT4 version. But I thought I would make a separate video on the actual bleeding process for the slave and master before installation. What's kind of challenging about the system in the Dodge Neon is that there are no bleed screws on the master cylinder or on the slave cylinder. This system is sealed. So bleeding sometimes can be uh, a little bit challenging. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link right over here so you can see that. But if you're just interested in seeing how I bleed this before installation, this is the video for you. So first I'll give you a very brief summary of how the system uh, works. This is the master cylinder. This is where the clutch pedal would uh, push down on it. And as it pushes, it will displace fluid into a plastic line. I cut off the line and I capped it here. That plastic line travels here and connects to the slave cylinder. The slave cylinder will push the clutch fork, disengaging the clutch. This line here just goes to the reservoir. The reservoir would have been attached here. So that's kind of the path that the fluid takes. Again, there is no bleed screw, so this is first uh, how you would separate the system. The parts are connected by a plastic line, and that plastic line is held to the body with a very simple clip, which I'm going to pull right here. If I pull this cotter, cotter pin up, and I pull this guy out. Once the clip has been removed, you can now see that the line is held by a rolled pin. That's the only thing that's holding that line in place. This is what the rolled pin looks like. And in order to get that rolled pin out, you have to punch it out. So I like to use a punch. And that punch is about the same size as the rolled pin. Now, I've seen pictures online of people who have done it like this. And there is even a picture of a guy who done it like this. And as he hammered down the roll pin, he drove it into his hand. So uh, that's probably not going to be uh, a pleasant experience. That's probably painful. So uh, what I do, I set the slave cylinder over a surface like this that is open so the roll pin can fall down as I press or hammer out on it. Once the roll pin has been fully extracted, then you can pull the line straight out. This is the slave cylinder where I already have removed the roll pin. Once the roll pin has been removed, you pull the line out. Inside of the channel here, inside of this little hole, there's a little rubber grommet. That little grommet is possible that you might be able to reuse it. Uh, probably will recommend getting a new one. That's it. So you want to get that one out and replace it with a new one if you can. I'm just going to put it back in here so I don't lose it. Now the factory does describe that the slave cylinder can be replaced on its own. Uh, so you would push out the roll pin and I will remove the cotter pin and then I would just swap it out. Connect it back again. And then the fluid will fill the slave cylinder. From the bottom of the car. The factory describes, the factory manual describes that you will have to press this several times. And you will pump. And as you are pumping, you are displacing the air that's in there. And the fluid is filling up this uh, cylinder. And the air is going to travel up the line. It's going to travel up the line into the master cylinder. And from the master cylinder, the bubbles will keep traveling out to the reservoir. So the replacement of the slave cylinder is fairly straightforward. Now here's the thing about hydraulics. Obviously, this uh, if this is filled with fluid, there's a potential of bubbles in here. Normally, it is recommended that you tilt this. So if you were um, bleeding this, you want to tilt it so the highest point will be the exit. So if you were bleeding, the floor will be down here. That's up, that's down. The bubbles will have a path to travel up. So you want to have that almost hang down like this as is being pushed so the air can flow out. 
Same thing with the lines. You want to hold the lines up. Every time you hold the lines up, the fluid will fall down and the bubbles will come up. Another trick that I see in mechanics do is they tap on the lines. And the reason why they tap on the lines is that the bubbles have a tendency to get stuck in the lines. So by tapping, you're releasing the bubbles and they go up. Obviously, that tapping will happen on the hard line that connects this to this. Now, replacing the master cylinder is very tricky because it's kind of far inside of the car. So most of the time when you're replacing the master cylinder, you'll probably be replacing both of the side vents. The, the factory manual describes this to be replaced as, as a set if you have to replace a master cylinder. So in my case, I'm gonna be bleeding a brand new master cylinder that's fully dry, there's no fluid in there, and a, a slave cylinder that's also fully dry. So I'm gonna bring those parts here and let's, we'll take a look at those. So these are the brand new parts I'm gonna be installing. This is the master cylinder and slave cylinder and they are fully dry. If you do buy the master cylinder as a Dodge brand new OM part, it will come with the reservoir already attached and it's also gonna come with the line that goes to the slave cylinder. It's gonna be pre-attached for you right here. Also, the slave cylinder is gonna be filled or pre-filled with fluid. So a lot of the work has been taken out already because this has already been pre-filled. So in a way, it's partially already bled. So the only thing you'll have to do at that point is connect the other end of the line to the slave cylinder and then follow the factory procedure of pumping the slave cylinder to drive the remaining bubbles out of the slave cylinder. However, if you are doing it like me where you have the parts totally dry, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna attach the reservoir to this end. Then I'm gonna attach my line to the master cylinder. This is a braided line aftermarket kit. I have a brand new hardware kit. The hardware kit has the rubber gasket that I'm gonna, I'm gonna insert into this orifice right here. And after that gasket is inserted, I'm gonna take the right angle in. I'm gonna put it into here, like so. Then I'm gonna drive the roll pin into that location to secure the line into place. Then I'm gonna install the cutter pin into the roll pin to ensure that it's fully secure and it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, I'm gonna take this end of the line and I'm gonna stick this on the reservoir. I'm gonna fill the reservoir with fluid. I'm gonna begin to pump. As I'm pumping, the slave cylinder is gonna start to suck up the fluid from the reservoir. This is always submerged. And as I keep pumping, the bubbles or the air is going to travel, travel up and burp out out of the cylinder, out of the reservoir that goes to the cylinder. And it's important to always keep that reservoir filled with liquid so this thing never sees air. And it's going to be a matter of pumping and pumping and pumping until we get all the air out. Obviously, this line is going to be um, stretched out. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate how I actually do this on the bench. But this is just to give you an overview how it's going to look. That's going to be the first step I'm going to do before I attach it. So let's go look at that. So here's the rubber gasket. And I actually found that the rubber gasket, uh, it's probably better if it's inserted in here before I put it inside the orifice. Once it's inserted in here, I take a little bit of brake fluid. This is dot three brake fluid. Lubricate that and then um, lubricate the inside of that. I already got it in there, the nice little bit of lube in there. And once that's inserted, once that's fully lubed, we can insert this into place, like so. Now we can drive the pin into there and secure it with the cutter pin. And here's the roll pin fully installed. All I did, I put my part on my favorite surface, which is this, uh, little wrench, and then I held the roll pin and I tapped it in. Tap, 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 boom, until it bottomed out. So now the line is secure. The only thing I have to do now is insert the cutter pin into it and bend that out to ensure that that roll pin is never gonna go anywhere. So this is the setup that I'm gonna be using for the bleed process. Normally the master uh, cylinder 
can be clamped on here and while I could do it I didn't want to scratch the any, any, any of my masters I mean it's brand new so I'm just being picky like that so what I did I just grabbed two wrenches and I uh, put the nuts on here to be able to hold it by the wrenches so I clamped the wrenches not my master cylinder and it already has it's leaning up you can see that it's leaning up so the bubbles are gonna naturally want to travel up this way towards the reservoir the reservoir is here it's not filled yet and I just I'm just holding it with a magnet just so it can stay up it is gonna be filled with fluid right now now let's look at the other line the line that's gonna go to the slave cylinder same thing, the bubbles will want to go up this pad right here. And I was going to place the line inside of a container, but then I couldn't find a container that wouldn't tip over and then that, that would force me to put the line like that. The bubbles would get stuck here. So I thought, hey, I already have a great container that might work. My old slave cylinder. So what I did, I got it. I just basically pulled the innards out, which is just the spring and this plunger. And I cleaned it real good and I reattached the line. Instead of putting the cotter pin, I put a little uh, screw on it. And that's going to allow me to remove the screw and separate that very easily after I'm done. So the bubbles are going to go up and they're going to come out, out of this. This is basically acting as a little temporary reservoir. The only thing I might have to do, I'm probably going to have to tilt this just to get any bubbles out of here or any bubbles out of any, any place in here. And I'll tap the lines. This one I'm not too concerned about because that goes to the reservoir. But I'll tap the lines to free any remaining bubbles. But this is not the final bleeding. The final bleeding will occur once the car is, uh, once this is mounted in the car and I'm bleeding the actual new slave cylinder this is just the pre-bleeding or what people call the bench bleeding but i thought i would show you guys my setup and see if this makes sense okay so i'm done with the pre-bleeding all i did was i used a little extension that happened to be small enough to fit in here and i depressed pushed pushed basically pumping the clutch pedal and that sucks up the liquid sucks the hydraulic fluid and the bubbles get this place here. Um, I had to play with the height of this just so this wouldn't come back down and refill the reservoir. So right now they're about the same height and there's fluid in the reservoir. There is fluid in the my temporary reservoir too. And I might be able to show you maybe one pump. If I keep pumping, uh, the liquid, the hydraulic fluid is gonna spill out, which is the reason why you don't wanna pump if it's something. Mm, no, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to pump. but. Basically, it took uh, maybe half a dozen pumps to get all the bubbles to come out of here and bubbles to come out of here. And now this is just entirely filled with fluid. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to very carefully disconnect this by removing the screw. And then I'm going to cap off the line so I can take this setup and install it in the car before I install the slave cylinder. I have also pre-filled the slave cylinder with fluid. And then what I do, I tap, tap, tap to get the bubbles out, add more fluid, and then tap, tap, tap a little more, more bubbles come out. Add more fluid, then tap, tap, tap over and over until eventually it's filled with fluid and free of bubbles. This is gonna help with the final bleeding process. I can now connect the fluid line to the slave. Time for the final bleeding. I first make sure I have enough fluid here, and then I remove the cap so we can vent out any remaining air. Notice I have the slave cylinder tilted to help the bubbles come out. If it's a brand new cylinder, I remove the locking tabs to release the front. One here, and one here. I carefully hold the cylinder from coming out too far. The service manual now requires you to pump the slave a minimum of 10 times. I do this slowly to encourage any air to escape. After pumping enough times, I lock the plastic tabs again and proceed to install the slave cylinder into the transmission. If you're interested in the actual process of installing the slave cylinder and master cylinder, I have placed a link in the description below. 
Well, that completes the bleeding process and it was actually not that difficult. I was intimidated the first time I heard about bleeding assistant, bleeding the clutch, bleeding the brakes, but it was actually fairly easy. I was kind of worried about the fact that I have no bleed screws, but it really didn't change the process. I still follow what I always did. I stuck the line into the same reservoir and pumped in a loop until the bubbles came out. And that's what helped me bleed the system, thinking of the air as bubble or as a bubble that is strapped. If I have a tube and I bend it into the shape of a U and the bubble is there, the bubble is gonna go to the top of that U. And no matter how much fluid I pump through that U, the bubble is gonna continue to be there because it wants to go up. So I have to manipulate the line in a way that allows the bubble to come out to the top. And that was the reason I had to play with the system and move side to side until I was able to maneuver the air out of it. So I didn't technically have to use the slave cylinder uh, my old slave cylinder as a reservoir. It could have been any reservoir, but I wanted something that would allow me to do the brake job myself very quickly, and it was right there, so what is it? might as well use it. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Hit the like button if you did. Also, I have a lot more SRT4 videos coming up, so consider subscribing if you haven't, and as always, thanks for watching.